Good evening everyone and welcome to today's session. <clears throat> Nagredi Neha Shweta uh, Miss Jane Maran and everybody who are all online. <clears throat> so another 24 hours we know very well tomorrow by this time we are all fully energetically answering the need so uh, I wish a great performance by all of you and thanks for coming to this session and giving me an opportunity to share with you these uh, last moments as an undergraduate from tomorrow after the exam you are going to be postgraduate <clears throat> So let's make the great beginning, doctor. So we are with 2018. Gargit saying, sir, aaj paper leak kar do. Bhai, leak karne ke liye kya hai? Bhoot dinon ke pehle hi humne leak kar diya. If you read 953 topics, as I have given you, Nobody is going to stop you from becoming a winner. <clears throat> now, doctor, at 24 weeks, what is the height of the fundus? Keep punching the answers, doctor. So this clinical examination of a pregnant woman and identifying the pregnancy, um, whether it is going well or not, is a part of the clinical examination is a very favorite area. Symphysis pubis to umbilicus. So you should remember on examination when do you find linear nigra doctor by 20th week. The height of the fundus is midway between symphysis pubis, symphysis pubis and the umbilicus at 16th week. It is at the level of the umbilicus at 24th week and if you take the xiphi sternum and the umbilicus, if you divide the distance into two one-thirds, three one-thirds, so at the junction of the lower one-third and the upper two-thirds of the distance between umbilicus and the xiphi sternum, typically it is at 28th week. 28th week, please don't forget, favorite question of the examiner. And the fundal height corresponds to the junction of the upper one third at 32nd week and it will reach the xiphi, xiphoid uh, enciform cartilage by 36th week and it once more comes down to the level of 32 weeks and 40th week because of the engagement of the head is what you need to remember. Right doc? So uh, it is at the 24th week that it is at uh, the level of the umbilicus. So once more this is one important uh, graphic either by hai, commonly asked question because antenatal assessment is the bare minimum basic examiner expects you. So typically um, it will go up and then will come down because of the engagement. Now doctor, in general population what do you want to use for screening of the Down syndrome? These are all some nasty questions because everything looks, everything is used for Down syndrome but there is something in the examiner's mind. Come on. What is your answer, doctor? So, Praveen is proposing chorionic villus sampling. Is it that often done or is there a more non-invasive way of uh, assessment, uh, Praveen? Always screening ke liye invasive are unlikely to be the answer. Simple uh, cut rule. Maran is proposing biomarkers. Uske liye injection lagana padta na. Biomarkers ke liye. Sabke paas paise nahi rehta. Nayomani IAS is saying ultrasound. Absolutely right. So doctor, in the first trimester, 
when will you do blood tests between 9 to 12 weeks ultrasound scan 12 to 13 weeks in order to test the nuchal thickness <clears throat> second trimester you will be doing maternal serum markers typically done between 14 to 18 weeks in addition to that you will do a morphology scan on ultrasound between 19 to 20 weeks and there are two tests to confirm I'm not talking screening confirm to confirm you do chorionic villus sampling what is the favorite MCQ of the examiner what is the time when it is being done 11 to 14 weeks amniocentesis typically done between 15th to 18th week of pregnancy kalke need to pg me examiner a question antenatal fetal well-being screening is the favorite question of the examiner doctor what is the best way to do the intrapartum fetal monitoring basically tocography electronic fetal monitoring continuous electronic fetal monitoring cardiac tocography is the best way so you will be using an ultrasound transducer and internally fetal scalp electrode and uh, it measures the fetal heart rate with respect to the uterine contraction since what you should remember <clears throat> once more foreign medical graduate exam mci screening test is uska uh, question bank is definitely a very good uh, precursor because meet pg fmg follow more or less a similar pattern for that matter any of these six entrances there are only six major entrances now aims all india i mean the need pg pgi jipma dnb dnb is no more there of course so all these six major question banks they follow more or less similarly the top priority list come to this 953 topic list i have given you after analysis only question is you will take 400 to 500 hours in order to do half an hour each topic that time are you able to invest or not that is the only funda doctor right there is no secret uh, recipe 15 to 18 weeks is the amniocentesis so chorionic villus sampling is done at 10 to 12 weeks amniocentesis at 15 to 18 weeks is what you have to appreciate it now uterine relaxation what do you give beta 2 agonist beta 2 agonist will relax the smooth muscle whether it is bronchi whether it is uterine smooth muscle they are fundamentally relaxing the smooth muscle hence they are used as tocolytics ritodrin isoxuprine etc etc so it is not oxytocin all the remaining are all uterine relaxants is what you need to remember so what is etosiban, Dr. Etosiban, oxytocin receptor antagonist is etosiban. Okay, so tomorrow's examiner, uh, tocolytics, preterm labor management is one of the top 20 out of the 50 topics may, gynecology obstetrics may, top 20 topics may lagega. So you have to be very sure. Then what are beta agonists? beta 2 agonist ritodrin isoxuprine terbutaline salbutamol fermeterol etc etc so ritodrin max sulfate also is used indomethacin nifedipine etosiban they are all the various tocolytic drugs is what you need to remember very good to see 140 online uh, classmates thank you last moment may you have given me opportunity to spend time with you whatever you have to read you have already read so that is the reason i feel i should read and uh, be able to discuss with you so that you listen and uh, go to the exam so that you are no more camouflaged by any negative feelings negative emotions we should all be far away from at the time of fight we should fight tooth 
to tooth, bone to bone, blood cell to blood cell and uh, we should emerge out as the winners. So doctor, thanks to, thanks for all of you for coming to this session. Now doctor, left occiput anterior obviously is what? Is a vertex presentation as all of you know very well. So the baby says, this is my occiput, that is your posterior. I try to fit it into that, into that left occipital posterior. What is the most common cause of miscarriage in the first trimester abortions, doctor? Come on, punch your answer. Question number 205. Most common cause of miscarriage in first trimester. Of, all of you know that chromosomal abnormalities are the most common cause. But out of all this, which one? Naomani is betting strongly on monosomy X. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, but uh, Srujana is bet betting on trisomy. Divya betting on trisomy. Excellent. Trisomy. Once more, this is what uh, called the enigma of entrance exam. Both uh, trisomy, monosomy, X, both look similar sounding. Between them most common boleto, that is where that is the little next level of questioning by the examiner. But no worries, uh, you can, um, you need to be very sporty when you go wrong or whenever you are clean board, no worries at all. So, but overall, what is important, doctor? Confidence, common sense. They are most important. Concepts, knowledge, no one is perfect. Everybody will have a lot of unfinished job when they are at this point uh, before going to exam, okay? So doctor, the most common abnormalities are all balanced translocations. Most common are all balanced translocations because when a balanced translocation got inherited, that lead to an unbalanced translocation in the fetus and lead to the development of early miscarriage. So that is what you need to appreciate. So, trisomy most common of all, followed by triploidy and monosomy, is what you should remember. Now, the pressure used for gynecological laparoscopy, abba, we feel like crying when we see this kind of questions now, no worries. But what I want to tell you guys is, uh, we feel atrociously tempted get seduced by the examiner but i think b i think b if, I, if b is right or a is right but remember you are risking one fourth mark so this kind of questions are all like uh, uh, mumbai red light area oh babuji oh babuji right so what you should say no abstain from that and then move forward otherwise if you are tempted na, one fourth negative marking Gaya. So, doctor, they go. Nidhi clean bowl. Then uh, Priya clean bowl. So, honestly, I too don't know the answer of this until I prepared for this class. These are that's the reason. Remember, doctor, entrance is not about intelligence. It is not IIT giant entrance, right? It is not about intelligence. It is about common sense. It is about confidence. It is about your full rounded personality. So that is the reason carry yourself. Don't carry your brain specially or anything. Leave the brain if possible in the home and go with a Conda Equina to the exam hall. Right doc? Now, <clears throat> the pneumoperitoneum, 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury of the pressure. 1 to 4 liters of carbon dioxide. If you pressure, you will the examiner how much carbon dioxide you will ask. So that is the reason always the examiner is asking to ask a lot of questions. Now, upon uh, hysteroscopy, what you cannot see? What do you do? Simple common sense. Hysteroscopy means hyster 
यूट्रस के अंदर जा रहे गुहा के अंदर जा रहे अगर गुहा के अंदर जाए तो गुहा के ऊपर क्या है दिखता क्या नहीं दिखता ना सो यूट्रस सरफेस डजेंट अपियर एंडोमेट्रियम अपियर सर्विक्स अपियर वेन यू वॉक इन टू दूट्रस सो दैट इज होल स्टोरी डॉक्टर यू नो नो पढ़ने से everything is not about reading it is all about common sense suddenly when you see this question no don't start feeling it but your hysteroscopy i have never gone i have never seen a hysteroscopy if you start feeling like that no what is the big deal hysteros you dress scopy under matlab bahar nahi dikhayega simple so such things are also asked frank bridge iska concept nahi rahe to answer karna mushkil hai what is meant by different types of breaches frank breach bhaiya extended breach mein wo to completely goa mein like a, on the side of the beach lying down with both legs up so that is extended breach flexed legs is like you are jumping into the swimming pool right holding the uh, thighs closer to the belly then you have a footling breach of all it is the um, in the frank bridge typically you find ischial tuberosity sacrum anus external genitalia they all will be presenting uh, features commonly a confusion between breach and cephalic is the mouth of the cephalic and the anus of the breach can become confused but here the relation will be triangular between bony promise bony prominences and the mouth in cephalic whereas in the breech it will be straight line that is the ischial tuberosities the ischial tuberosities and the anus will be in straight line so that's how you differentiate whether it is breech or cephalic in case of frank breech is what you need to remember so what you will do to treat it external cephalic version after 34 weeks so typically you attempt external cephalic version correctly saying after 36 weeks vaginal delivery is possible and uh, you need to look for all the other uh, complications like any uh, fetal growth retardation uterine bleeding previous cesarean twin pregnancy etc etc now best parameter to find the age of gestation in the first trimester iske bina kuch questions rehta kya examiner ke liye very standard hai how do you monitor the fetal well being so that uh, that's a very the top 20 topics right so shweta rightly confidently emphatically tells crown rump length excellent doctor proud of you so this is the typical crown rump length in this case it is 60 mm at around 12 plus or minus 3 weeks so in the first trimester we use the crown rump length from 7th to 12th week of gestation first semester mein trimester mein 7 to 12 weeks of gestation what is the rule of thumb while estimating the gestational age 6 weeks 6 weeks plus crown rump length is equal to the age of the baby will be 6 weeks plus days the number of days now there are two ways of calculating the expected date of delivery how do you calculate dd neglis rule based upon the last menstrual period so the edd calculated by lmp and the edd calculated uh using the crown rump length in the first trimester if the edd calculated from the uh crown rump length is within 7 days from what you calculated from the last menstrual period in the case of the first trimester there is no need to change the edd similarly second trimester may what is the rule the gestational age that you calculated is falling within 10 days of the edd by lmp then also there is no need to change the edd 
Now, that is the important uh, principle. Now, doctor, crown rump length. Typically, first trimester is what you are going to ultimately remember. Now, a girl is said to have primary amenorrhea, never menstruated. When do you call that? If there are no secondary sexual characters, by what age you call it as uh, primary amenorrhea? Come on, punch your answers, doctor. Primary amenorrhea, ka. definition is the favorite question of the examiner. So, uh, please uh, inform your classmates, drop a line in the WhatsApp uh, study group. Very simple. Suddenly this 164 online become 1000, how you know? Just if you drop the paper leak, then we have a discussion. Pura dunya aega, right? So, uh, that's the reason some of us will put uh, a attractive YouTube title. Paper leak will come down for a WhatsApp discussion. So, for a uh, YouTube discussion. Paper leak nahi hota doctor. Leak hori ka jarrat nahi hai. If you have prepared 953 high yield topics thoroughly, that means you know what examiner want. That is the whole purpose of any coaching or any bleaching program, doctor. Very good. Most of you have correctly answered. Nayamani is betting on 14. Absolutely. I think uh, some of you have come out into that exalted state of uh, attack of the examiner. So, absence of menses by age 16 with normal secondary sexual characters is one definition without secondary sexual development absence of menses by age 14 is another definition of primary amenorrhea is what you need to remember so neha is asking how to join very simple doctor nine triple zero eight six eight three five six call karo neha vida right immediately you will get that 650 uh, uh sorry 953 topic ka pdf milega second you will also get a three day free pass to the entire online mbbs.com video library become available and uh, you will also be included into the WhatsApp study group. We have about 20,000 uh, students in uh, uh, the various uh, WhatsApp groups. You please uh, ping to this number, Neha. You please ping to this number, 9000868356. Then uh, immediately they will uh, give you a PDF, online activation, and they include you into our WhatsApp study group. So once more, I like to tell, please tell your juniors, always our uh, students are our marketing brand ambassadors. From day after tomorrow, our 2021 batch is starting. Every day we will have two hours of live online discussion according to the schedule. Already we have given the schedule. Right? And every Saturday there is a subject test, every Sunday there is a grand test and discussion. Everything live broadcasted on the YouTube, but we will remove that and archive it into the online MBBS.com video library. Already in the online MBBS.com video library, we have thousand hours of video lectures, which fall into 3000 video lectures covering 30,000 MCQs and uh, 953 topic wise we classified and made it available and discussed this kind of powerpoint slides you have 2 lakh powerpoint slides for you to do the revision of the notes you can take a print screen of those important slides anything you can do and also we have previous 200 full scale grant tests along with the discussion video is also there but freshly every week we have a new grant test so you have a video library to do the revision and you also have a live online uh, broadcasted session of almost 500 hours. So there is no need of looking anywhere. Please tell your juniors. East or West on 9mbbs.com 
is the best and Dr. Murli Bharadwaj will be your everyday companion to prepare along with you like your classmate. Right? So that is what I like to tell all of you. Now doctor, when do you call secondary amenorrhea? Already men's have started but later on for six months if there is any cessation of menses that is called as secondary now this is one important pictorial you have to be uh, uh, you have to be uh, very much ready doctor uh, sir you have preparation modules for mrcp exam also right we are one of the best uh, best learning material of uh, general medicine right so though i teach all subjects like inborn error of metabolism for even md so for usmle st step one step two and mrcp we are shortly uh, starting the sessions so now doctor primary amenorrhea look for secondary sexual characters if they are present but menses have not yet started commenced what is the likely possibility? Imperforate hymen, cervical agenesis, Mullerian agenesis, Rokitansky, Kastner, Foster syndrome, etc. If there is any arrest of puberty with primary amenorrhea, think of hypothalamic pituitary failure or premature ovarian failure. Now, there are no menses, but breast has developed. But pubic and axillary hair is absent. What is your diagnosis? This is going to be the sure shot MCQ in the tomorrow's exam, doctor. Breast has developed, but pubic and axillary hair is, uh, has not developed. Case of primary amenorrhea. That is called androgen insensitivity syndrome. Uh, uh, is what you need to remember. Now, Primary amenorrhea, secondary sexual characters, right? They are absent. So look how is FSH? FSH high or FSH low? If FSH is high, ka matlab kya hai? that means pituitary is working. How will secondary sexual characters develop, doctor? Only when ovary is stimulated by the pituitary and it starts producing estrogen, secondary sexual characters develop. So, secondary sexual characters didn't develop, primary amenorrhea is there, but FSH is high ka matlab, there is a problem in the ovary, but pituitary is working. If the FSH is low means ovary is good, but the pituitary stopped working. So, that is how you will basically appreciate. So, even Kalge exam may doctor, one question on Differential diagnosis of primary amenorrhea. Very cool mind you can answer. So, if primary amenorrhea is there, what will you look for? Secondary sexual characters. If they are there, means ovary is good, pituitary good, everything good. Only the problem is with vagina. Imperforate hymen, transverse vaginal septum, cervical agenesis, mullerian agenesis. Secondary sexual characters. Only breast has developed, the pubic axillary did not develop, and primary amenorrhea, androgen insensitivity. If the secondary sexual characters are absent with primary amenorrhea, look whether FSH is high, that means uh, pituitary is intact, but ovary gone. If FSH is low, ovary is intact, but pituitary is gone. That is as simple as that, doctor. Now, <clears throat> Um, Rajiv, please uh, give a phone call to our helpline. They will be more than happy. Uh, sometimes activation of the free pass and PDF uh, may be slightly delayed. So, please bear with us. So, yesterday almost 700 students got activation the free pass. So, our guys are uh, um, working like a uh, printing press. So, doctor, now what are the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea? This is where everybody answers correctly pregnancy. 
So secondary amenorrhea can be uterine causes like cervical stenosis, Asherman syndrome. Because of the endometrial sinicae, how can they be able to bleed if they can't? So Asherman syndrome. Ovarian causes can be premature ovarian failure, pelvic irradiation, Turner syndrome. It can be due to hypothalamic dysfunction. But the most common cause is pregnancy. Is what you need to remember. So hypothalamic amenorrhea. Hypothalamic amenorrhea, if you talk at the pathophysiological level, is it hypothalamus pituitary or ovary means? Hypothalamic cause of amenorrhea is the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea, is what you need to remember. I'm so happy, doctor. 201 double century. We will at least see 300 today. Now, what is the marker of ovarian reserve in premenopausal women? Who is going to give me the correct answer? For the first answer, for the doctor. Marker of ovarian reserve in premenopausal women. Anisha Choudhury is proposing raised LH by FSH. Shweta, Shweta, super. Excellent, doctor. Excellent. Anti-Mullerian hormone. So you should remember. Suppose, of course, anti-Mullerian hormone represents a marker of ovarian reserve. And uh, typically, how do you assess the one more way? Third day, day three, follicle stimulating hormone. So the level of FSH on day 3 is a good marker even anti-mullerian hormone represents the marker of ovarian reserve anti-mullerian hormone is produced by granulosa cells is what you need to remember now doctor what is the common mode of transmission in pyogenic TB salpingitis TB to fallopian tube mein hota hai mother it is hematogenous. It is hematogenous is the commonest mode. A 25 year old lady, curdy white discharge from vagina. Even first MBBS also you will answer correctly. It is candida. Pure peril pyrexia bulnekele. What is the definition? These kind of things kill us doctor. Really kill us. So, come on, punch your answer. I say questions may lot of times guessing nahi chalta, numericals may. You do it, you do it, you don't do it, you don't do it. Simple, American divorce. So, Maran is proposing 100.4. Then uh, Niharika is also saying 100.4. Great, 100.4. So, Dr. 38 degrees Celsius. 100.4 degree foreign heat on two separate occasions at least four hours apart are more than 38.5 that is 101.6 foreign heat is considered to be the postpartum fever is what you should remember now what is the effect of tamoxifen tamoxifen is anti-estrogen when it comes to breast but tamoxifen is Tamoxifen is pro-estrogen when it comes to endometrium. So that is the reason there is an increased risk of endometrial carcinoma if you are using the tamoxifen. Tamoxifen can lead to benign polyps, stromal fibrosis, endometrial hyperplasia, endometroid and non-endometroid carcinoma, etc. etc. Et now, in endometriosis, how do you treat? Once more, top 20 topics in Dynops, endometriosis rocks the story, right doc, endometriosis. So typically we use gonadotropin analog, aromatase inhibitor, mifepristone to treat what is endometriosis, ectopic implantation of the endometrium. Endometrium ka jaga ka hota hai? Uterus. But if it goes and start becoming islands here and there in the ovary everywhere, 
right so that is endometriosis so we have to antagonize the estrogen to attack the endometriosis so that is the reason so doctor quickly tell me what is the therapeutic algorithm for the management of endometriosis so doctor starting from monday we are starting with anatomy please tell your juniors right evening uh, 6 pm to 8 pm every day we have a live online interactive class on the youtube channel we will be discussing around 100 mcqs so what we do is january 6th to june 30 june may hamare fmg pyare desh vasiyo will take their exam so there are 10000 mcqs from 19 subjects in the past 15 years of fmg so they will be topic wise classified and descending order of priority they will be discussed debated and delivered so that is the plan every saturday subject test and every sunday grand test so in about 25 weeks we finish uh, 10,000 question bank discussion live online then uh, starting from uh, july 1st to november 30th last 15 years pgi pgi is a very good question bank so PGI ka, there are about 6,000 MCQs topic wise classified and we discuss live. Then starting from December 1st to January 4th next year, every day there will be a grand test and discussion. So this is going to be our uh, standard schedule. So you can tell your juniors, they will get live online broadcasted class. Additionally, they also get the archived video lectures, mock tests, sli uh, PowerPoint slides, etc, etc. A lot of my students who are postgraduates, who are toppers, they say, Sir, we don't do anything, we will deliver you in the free way. Uh, uh, they are some of the best students. I said, why not? Let's make uh, this YouTube channel like more or less a TV show, right? So, Nowadays, we can teach sitting in the home. So that is the plan, doctor. Now, whenever endometriosis is there, if the pain is there, look whether it is mild to moderate, then you can treat with OCPs, progestins, are considered the treatment. If the pain is moderate to severe, you need to do a laparoscopic diagnosis, uh, and uh, you need to do the surgical excision of the lesions. That is what you need to do. Then, after surgically ablating the lesions, what will you do? Danazole, OCP, GnRH analogs, or pro progestins is the standard treatment. So, you have surgically removed, laparoscopically, still there is a chance of recurrence. Then, if there is a recurrence, what you need to do? You need to do medical therapy for about another six to nine months. Suppose if it is an intractable pain with recurrence, that becomes an indication for hysterectomy, oophorectomy in endometriosis. So that is one side of the story. Imagine yourself in the shoes of uh, um, the in the shoes of uh, uh, the patient, right? Now think that all these clinical algorithms, how you master is. You sit with another friend, tell them, okay, you are the patient, I am the doctor, I am going to counsel you how to manage. That's how you discuss with your friend. Infertility, if it is there, with endometriosis, laparoscopically prove the diagnosis, do surgical excision, then that becomes an indication for in vitro fertilization and super ovulation. That is the story, doctor. So what is the story of aromatase inhibitors? Fundamentally, androstene dione become estrone. Aromatase is the enzyme that is inhibited by aromatase inhibitor. So the idea is how do we bring down the estrogen level, whether it is breast cell cancer or whether it is endometrium. Aromatase inhibitors have a role both in uh, breast cancer and also in the case of the endometrial tumor is what you need to remember. So doctor, this is GNRH produced, you can use GNRH agonist. 
But ultimately, when estrogen acts on the endometrium, we use aromatase inhibitors to stop it. Now, the exogenous question in pharmacology is uh, how do you classify aromatase inhibitors? They can be steroidal, non steroidal. So, amino glutathamide is non steroidal. Second generation, rho glutamine. Present generation, third, which is non steroidal. You should remember, doctor. Anastrozole, letrozole, and uh, varazole. Then, what is the third generation steroidal aromatase inhibitor? Tomorrow's examiner's favorite question. Eximestane is an aromatase inhibitor, which is steroidal third generation. So, this classification is a very high yield area, doctor. Be um, very sure about. Now, radiological test for staging the endometrial cancer. How do you do? Come on, punch your answer, doctor. 218. 218. So, please punch the answer. See doctor, one important question. For which malignancy staging is not using uh, any diagnostic modalities? Only surgical staging, that is ovarian cancer, right? So, radiological test for staging the endometrial cancer, how do you do? So, you should remember PET CT. Nitin, absolutely right. Shermaji, also right. PET CT. So, this is the classical way by which PET CT can diagnose paraiotic nodes, pelvic nodes. So, stage 3C endometrial cancer. So, PET CT is the one which is going to be the one. The number of ovarian follicles typically increase in polycystic ovarian disease. Once more, doctor, Kalke exam may agar steen Levanthal syndrome PC VODK upar question nahi hai to hum accept nahi karenge nahi karenge. Definitely will be there. So please take a chance. Definition of PC VOD. Treatment of PCOD, they are the two important core aspects of the examiner. Ossical liver ratio, amma, once more, agaya, numerical question, numerical question. Jisko malum hai, wo answer karega, jisko nahi malum hai, mar gaya, gabbar wala questions hai ye. Bolo, sarkar, kitna hai, ossical liver ratio. Deepika is betting on 1.3 is to 1. Sajal Goyal also. Amardeep Kaur also. Badia. 1.3 is to 1. Absolutely. The length of the long process of the malleus to that of the long process of the incus is called the lever ratio. 1.3 is what you need to remember. Endolymph is produced by very easy question. Stria vascularis. This one the age old question. Endolymph versus perilymph. What are the differences? Endolymph is formed by stria vascularis. Endolymphatic sac maintains that homeostasis. Endolymph has a high sodium, low potassium. exam High sodium, low potassium is endolymph. How will you remember? Potassium is intracellular ion doctor. Intracellular endo. So endo may intracellular ion is low. So low potassium is endolymph and high sodium in endolymph. Endolymph ka endocochlear potential kitna hai. Examiner twist karega kaan pakad ke. 50 to 120 millivolts and why that sodium is high potassium is low because there's a sodium potassium ATP which maintain that gradient so endolymph kaha reta doctor membranous labyrinth may perilymph kaha reta between membranous and bony labyrinth okay 
Now, if you look endolymph, it is stria vascularis, right? And uh, endolymph's potassium is similar to intracellular fluid, and uh, perilymph, the exact origin is not known. It is similar to serum infiltrate, CSF, and it is rich in sodium, similar to ECF and plasma. That is what you need to remember. So, doctor, this is the perilymph in scala vestibuli, perilymph in scala tympani, endolymph in scala media, and you should remember the endolymphatic potential. Now, doctor, uh, maximum tolerable noise according to the government of India. Very good to see commandant. Commandant is our MD general medicine topper from Armed Forces Medical College. Last year he was also studying like all you guys. So I hope day after tomorrow I will find many more commandants like you among the audience. Right doctor? So 90 decibels in 8 hours per day for 5 days per week is considered to be the maximum tolerable noise is what you should remember. कल हमने डिस्कस किया ना डॉक्टर 2019 जून में भी यही क्वेश्चन आया द ड्रग हु साइड इफेक्ट प्रीडोमिनेंटली कॉक्लियोस टॉक्सिसिटी क्या होता है केनामाइसिन इज कॉक्लियो टॉक्सिक प्लीज रिमेंबर वंस मोर ऑल एमिनो ग्लाइकोसाइड्स कॉक्लियो टॉक्सिक वेस्टिबुलर टॉक्सिक बोथ ऑफ देम प्रीडोमिनेंटली कॉक्लियो टॉक्सिक यस्टरडे ओनली आई गिव यू दैट लिस्ट यू हैव टू बी श्योर अबाउट the most common cause of the facial nerve palsy hota hai idiopathic bell's palsy which is of element i flamingo pink appearance aap aank khol ke answer kar sakte is question ko kyo without a question on otosclerosis there will be no need pg right so tell me doctor flamingo pink is otosclerosis so bhaiya what is the normal color of tympanic membrane? Pearly white is the normal color. It becomes congested in ASOM. It becomes dull in serous otitis media. It is blue if there is a hemotympanum. It is a flamingo pink. In otosclerosis, it will show Schwartz sign where there is a vascularity at the level of the handle. So that is what you should remember. Now, Doc, ear pain, tinnitus, vertigo, with the feeling of blocked ear. What is it a feature of? Ear pain, tinnitus, vertigo, with the feeling of blocked ear. Come on, who is going to give me the um, correct answer, Doctor? Should be the answer. Nayamani is proposing gridinigo. Come on. Come on. Any other answers? Our egg bar search ke bolo before computer mahodai locks it. Right? So, Anisha ji bol rahe Lermo Edge syndrome. Nisha ji bhi grade in go. Varun also proposing Lermo Edge. Amma. So, uh, Maruf Khan My name is Khan I only give the correct answer So doctor Costin syndrome Temporomandibular arthritis ko kehte hai Costin's There will be pain which is severely aching It gets intensified on chewing and movement of jaw It occur at temporomandibular joint It is unilateral Which is called Costin Typically in this pain, tinnitus also will be there, sinus pain will be there, dental occlusal support loss will be there. That is called costin, is what you should be sure. But yeah, one of the things given was cantrel. Achha, cantrel kya hai dekhenge? Cantrel syndrome ko kehte hai, pentalogy of cantrel. What do you have in that? You have a midline anterior abdominal wall defect 
and sternum may there is a distal sternal cleft and there is a defect in the anterior diaphragm there is a defect in the apical pericardium and there is a pericardio pericardio peritoneal communication there are also intracardiac abnormalities is a combination ko kehte hain cantrell syndrome acha some of you have answered uh lermoyage lermoyage kya hota i know why you got uh, uh, tempted tinnitus loss of hearing and uh, what to go just like minier minier only actually it is a variant of minier but after an attack hearing improves after the vertigo pehla tinnitus loss of hearing baad mein vertigo aata vertigo aane se deafness will improve that is called as the uh lermoyage syndrome which is a variant of the minier is what you should remember gradinigo syndrome ab bhi aa gaya hamara gradinigo persistent otoria pus is coming out retro orbital pain because of the trigeminal nerve involvement along with the diplopia which is the convergent squint because of the lateral rectus palsy due to abducens nerve is called gradinigo you have to be very sure doctor ent may ent may 10 ka 10 mark ke aana hai right there is no creativity ent surgical subjects usme examiner kya creativity dikha sakta hai kuch bhi nahi kar sakta gynox ko standard 30 out of 30 print mark ke aana hai exam hall mein right that is a promise by all your guys the male a, a trauma patient admitted watery discharge from the nose that is csf rhinorrhea young operation atrophic rhinitis ha is cancer right bolo doctor internal carotid ka branch kaun hai who is contributing to the kissel back so once more doctor little area kissel back anatomy ka mistake nahi karna zarur aane wala seat guarantee question hai Prasun Vaidya is proposing anterior ethmoidal. Very good, excellent doctor. So internal carotid will give rise to ophthalmic artery, ophthalmic artery. That will be giving rise to anterior posterior ethmoidal. Anterior ethmoidal is contributing to the kissel back. External carotid ka facial artery gives superior labial artery gives septal branch that is contributing to little sepia. external carotid gives maxillary artery and it gives rise to sphenopalatine artery that is contributing to the kissel back and also there is a greater palatine artery which is contributing to the kissel back so that is the story doctor nasopharyngeal carcinoma radiation biscuit question superior laryngeal nerve other damage ho gaya to what will happen what are the symptoms except panchvad answer doctor very good to see 242 online students kal ka exam hone ke baad bhi aap sab aaya bole to you have so much confidence on dr murli bhardwaj that he will definitely give you the most high yielding areas FMG 2018 itself is a most high yielding area because the pattern, the pattern is emulated by the other NAT board exams. So, doctor, uh, एक एक नजर इसका एक review करना बहुत अच्छी बात है. So, uh, very good. Everyone is saying aspiration. Excellent, doctor. So, quickly, बताओ superior laryngeal nerve का unilateral or bilateral. all the muscles vocal cord muscles are supplied by the grand laryngeal nerve except the cricothyroid so superior laryngeal nerve palsy lead to cricothyroid paralysis similarly above the level of the vocal cord she supplied by it so there is a reason there is a anesthesia ipsilaterally 
of the larynx above the level of the vocal cord. So what is the cause of superior laryngeal thyroid surgery, thyroid tumor, diphtheria? How will be the clinical features? What is the purpose of the cricothyroid? Pitch, pitch. Lata Mangeshkar's voice has high pitch. Little children cry with high pitch. So there is a decrease in pitch. Weak voice, anesthesia of the larynx on one side, occasionally only aspiration. Then if you look laryngeally, laryngoscopy, then askew position of the uh, glottis. Anterior commissure is rotated onto the health, healthy side, so skew position. Shortening of the vocal load with the loss of the tension. And uh, that is the reason vocal cord appear wavy if it is superlaryngeal nerve palsy. There is a flapping of this paralyzed vocal cord at the time of inspiration it will be simply sagging down and bulges out on expiration vocal cord that is the features of superior laryngeal nerve palsy bilateral ka hota hai any cervical lymphadenopathy diphtheria trauma so there is an the anesthesia of larynx cough choking weak husky voice classical feature yahan to aap tracheostomy karna padega epiglottopexy karna padega Similarly, recurrent laryngeal. Unilaterally, what will happen? It will lead to all intrinsic muscles of the larynx paralyzed except the cricothyroid. So, what is the position of the vocal cords in recurrent laryngeal? Median, paramedian. They don't move at all with inspiration, laryngoscopically, when you are seeing. Whereas, superior laryngeal may kya hota hai? Typically, there will be waving during the inspiration. Expression may they will be bulging, so that is the feature. So, if it is only unilateral recurrent laryngeal palsy, patient is asymptomatic, is what you should remember. Generally, it does not require treatment because the other vocal cord will try to uh, compensate, right? Huh. So, bilateral, bilateral recurrent laryngeal. All intrinsic are paralyzed bilaterally except the cricothyroid. So vocal cords will lie in the median or paramedian position because of the unopposed action of the cricothyroid. There will be dyspnea, there is a strider. Usually bilateral occur after thyroidectomy. Here it is an indication for tracheostomy. So that is the point of the <laughs> vocal cord paralysis. Note this point you are order. Vocal cord paralysis, visual field defect. A two topics right now, doctor. ENT ka vocal cord paralysis and visual field defect. Superior quadrant tenopia, inferior quadrant tenopia. Abhi division karo. Bahut time hai hamare liye. Right? So, kitne baje ko hai doctor exam? 10 o'clock or uh, uh, afternoon? Kab hai? So, Recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies what? Everything except the cricothyroid. So, doctor, let us talk about a bit of nerve supply of larynx. Superior laryngeal, superior laryngeal nerve, the internal branch of it supplies the larynx above the level of the vocal cords. And superior laryngeal has an external branch which supplies cricothyroid. Clear? Recurrent laryngeal. Recurrent laryngeal supplies all muscles except cricothyroid and sensory branch from the vocal cords and below, that is subglottic area, is all recurrent laryngeal nerve. So finally, vagus ka kitra nerve hai, doctor? Once more, vagus, seventh, fifth cranial nerve. Without that, there is no paper. So you have to quickly do a revision, doctor. Uh, 130 reporting time, 3 baje ko. Are ba. 3 baje bole to. Are you all ready? Shall we? Last uh, three four days uh, we are having a session from uh, 11 to 1 p.m. Na, well, almost 2 p.m. Tonight also we have a session in the night. Eh? I don't advise you to participate. Those who still have the courage to participate, welcome. Otherwise, I don't have any other work to do in the night. 
I am like a unemployed MD general medicine. So I might, so it all depends on uh, your choice. Okay, 10 o'clock was shuru karang, 11 both later hota, 1 p.m. tak jitna energy hai, utna batik karang, right? Ha. So doctor, Vegas ko ek pharyngeal branch hai ta. It supports all muscles of the pharynx and soft palate. Except for, beautiful question, pharyngeal muscle not supplied by the vagus, the only pharyngeal muscle, stylopharyngeus of the pharynx is not uh, supplied by the vagus, it is supplied by ninth cranial nerve. So Maran is saying, uh, we will miss you sir, we won't miss you, I want you to all miss me. I don't want you guys from Monday, I don't want to see your face, I only want to see your juniors, right? Huh. So, good. Uh, then doctor, tensor villi palatinate, supplied by fifth, um, is what you need to remember. Then uh, superior laryngeal now, it divides into external and internal laryngeal now, recurrent laryngeal now and cardiac branch. So that is the whole story doctor. Now, <clears throat> most common site for the laryngeal web, kaha reta? Who is going to give me the answer? Question number 233. Try and answer doctor. 233. Uh, Muhammad is proposing supraglottic. Nayamani, subglottic. Uh, Vinusha. Vinusha, Jindabad, glottis level. So these are all uh, trickling questions, doctor. Are EMD kam kitre din jate, hospital ko das din jate. Kuch bhi nahi dikta. So first three four days seriously jate, uske baad canteen mein will be hanging out with the, a girl or a boy. So congenital laryngeal web. Typically seventy five percent are glottic. Most are anterior, they are thin membranous, is what you need to remember. How do they present? Laryngeal web, vocal dysfunction, airway obstruction, strider, etc. etc. A 15 year old boy presented with history of fever since two days, unable to swallow, muffled voice. And the right tonsil is shifted to midline. A serve dene ke baad bhi agar aap Quincy ko recognize nahi kare to. Quincy feel ho jayega. Perit tonsillar abscess. Now quickly doctor once more. What is the bread and butter of ENT guys? Tonsils. Aaj char tonsil mil gaya to. You can go for a candlelit dinner with your girl. Right? Now. With anyone's girl. Of course. Now, tonsillitis, how does it present? A raw sensation in the throat, refusal to eat, voice become thick, jugulodigastric lymph node is enlarged in tonsillitis. That's the point. So, this is the uvula, these are the tonsils. Then what are the different types of tonsils, doctor? Parenchymatous tonsillitis, follicular tonsillitis. Then what are the tonsillitis complications? Peritonsillar abscess, otitis media, subacute bacterial endocarditis and nephritis also can occur. Then septicemia, anything can happen. This is called cateral tonsillitis, when the tonsil got inflamed as part of generalized infection and uvula is pushed centrally. Now, membranous tonsillitis. What is the histological hallmark of tonsil crypts? Crypts. If there is an exudation from the crypts, they all undergo coalescence and appear on the surface of the tonsil. That is called membranous tonsillitis. When the whole tonsil is congested, swollen, that is called acute parenchymatous tonsillitis. Then you have a peritonsillar abscess. Now comes an important uh, single liner MCQ doctor. In peritonsillar abscess, where is the pus collected? It is the upper pole of the tonsil and the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. 
ये दोनों के बीच में पस अटक गया That's the point you should remember. Once more, examiner खेलेगा कहाँ रहता पस मुझे मालूम है तुझे that you know that tonsillitis, peritonsillitis happens, but where is it collected? Suddenly, दिमाग block हो जाता, right? Upper pole of the tonsil and superior constrictor. Peritonsillar abscess is more common in males. Recurrent tonsillitis is a risk factor. Any foreign body embedded also is a risk factor. So whenever you have recurrent tonsillitis, there is a fibrosis of the crypta, closure of the crypta, the pus breaks through the capsule, peritonsillar cellulitis leading to peritonsillar abscess. How do they present, doctor? Trismus and hyperemic displaced tonsil, midline ko move ho gaya na. Ditto, ditto, same question got repeated in uh, December uh, 2019. Uh, uh, FMG also. So that's the reason, doctor. Every examiner has a pattern, standard stock rate. Pura stock ko dispose karna padta, every batch ko. So, you have to be sure on the minimum guarantee topics ko, you should not lose marks. Very easy to prepare if you know the strategy, topic list, descending order of priority, and how to carefully use your time. That is most important. Right, doctor? Now, कुछ बात करना बोले तो मुझे नेहा से डर लग रहा है। Sir, subject बात करो, कुछ भी और नहीं बात करना। अच्छा? So good, we should have students like that. Now, parapharyngeal abscess, septicemia, hemorrhage, supraglottic edema, complications, incision, drainage, tonsillectomy are the treatment. खत्म, खत्म। वरे बा 250 online uh, students now juvenile recurrent laryngeal papillomatosis what is it because of doctor it is because of the human papilloma virus intrinsic laryngeal muscle which is life-saving leading to passage of the air through the glottis which one is that punch your answer doctor punch your answer yes doc so, uh, should you answer? Yeah, this is also a biscuit question. Posterior crico arytenoid. Come on, Shamina, you can't do such wrongs. So, what is the action of posterior crico arytenoid? Up uh, Titanic movie dekana, right? So, DiCaprio will be standing behind the Winslet. Uh, and holding on her back like that your posture cricoarytenoid is an abductor is what you should remember so cricothyroid is the only muscle outside the larynx posture cricothyroid is the only abductor of the vocal cord hence called safety muscle of larynx then transverse retinoid is the unpaired muscle then you have ocalis vagera vagera CSOM patient, this is a beautiful question. Hectic picket fence, picket fence fever with rigor tenderness around the mastoid. What is it typical of? Come on. Punch your answer, doctor. One brave, bold answer. King is proposing D. King Karthik. Very good. All of you are ready to storm the examiner on such questions. One of the questions on CSOM complications, age old the tradition of the examiner. So quickly let's talk on lateral sinus thrombophlebitis, doctor. In lateral sinus thrombophlebitis, sigmoid sinus, transverse sinus, they are called lateral venous sinuses. Their inner wall is inflamed. What is the cause of lateral sinus thrombosis? Coyalescent mastoiditis, chronic suppression of middle ear with cholesteatoma. What are the common organisms? Hemolytic streptococcus, pneumococcus, staphylococcus. Then why thrombophlebitis occur? Once the perisinus abscess is formed, there is a endophlebitis, that is the mural thrombus formation, occlusion of the sinus lumen, intrasinus abscess, and extension of that infected thrombus. So this is the 
inflammation of outer wall, mural thrombus, occluding thrombus, and central abscess formation within that thrombus is the classical feature, is what you need to um, remember. Now, doctor, uh, hectic picket fence fever with rangers. What is the meaning of it? So, basically, this is called picket fence, doctor, right? High fever, irregular, one or more spikes per day is called picket, picket, picket fence. Each spike is whenever there is a release of that fresh septic embolus. There will be chills and rigors, headache, anemia, emaciation also. Grease, ingal, sign, kya hota hai? Little sinus, storm of libitus may. Kal ke examiner ka favorite question. Edema on the posterior part of the mastoid because of the thrombosis of the mastoid emissary vein is called Grisinger sign. Lateral sinus thrombosis may one more thing, papal edema can be there. There will be blurring of disc margins, retinal hemorrhages, dilated veins on fundoscope. Then jugular vein ke, uh, direction may there will be tenderness if there is a lateral sinus thrombus. Tobe IR test. Crow back to test definitely I the examiner ka question. Tobe I have kya hai doc? You compress the internal jugular vein, rapid rise of the CS of pressure, and you release it, there is a rapid fall. So uh, that that happens in the normal jugular vein. But if there is any lateral sinus thrombosis, transmission of the pressure that you are applying doesn't go to the CSF. So, on the thrombosis side, there will be no rise and fall if you are pressing on uh, the jugular vein. That is Tobia here. Crowbeck, pressure on internal jugular vein on normal side will lead to engorgement of retinal veins and uh, uh, is what you need to remember. So, this is how the retinal changes in case of lateral sinus thrombosis. Always picket fin kind that is with spikes of fever occur in malaria. So the close differential diagnosis clinically for the lateral sinus thrombosis will be malaria is what you should remember. Then if you do MRI doctor, delta sign is positive. Any venous sinus thrombus in the brain, venous sinus thrombus will lead to delta sign. So here you can see delta sign, empty delta sign, triangle area with a rim enhancement and a central low density, which is a classical feature whenever there is any lateral sinus thrombosis, is what you should remember. Then what can this lateral sinus thrombus can lead to? It can lead to septicemia, abscess to the lung, meningitis, cerebellar abscess, jugular bulb thrombosis, otitic hydrocephalus, even cavernous sinus thrombosis it can lead to. What are the clinical presenting features of cavernous sinus thrombosis? Proptosis, fixation of eyeball with papillary edema. So how do you treat lateral sinus thrombosis? Cortical or modified radical mastodectomy. You have to give antibiotics, anticoagulants, both a regular uh, part of the buffet. Then internal jugular vein ligation, blood transfusion for anemia. Then one important complication of lateral sinus thrombosis kya hai? Don't forget. Otitic hydrocaphalus. Otitic hydrocaphalus. Typically, it is because of what? Sigmoid sinus thrombosis. That's what you need to remember. Khatta, story is over. So just like this, what we have done now, all 953 topics, every topic ke upar, doctor. If I scratch you 20 points, fata fat bolna hai. That point of perfection is what all we should try. You don't need to study more than 4 to 5 months. Maximum 400 to 500 hours. That is the deal. What are the most common sites of laryngeal web? Abhi abhi dekha na. Glottis mein rehta. Anterior laryngeal wall pe rehta. That is what you should remember. Most of it is anterior, most of it is glottic. Now, doctor, laryngeal web ke baat kare to 22Q11, you should remember. 
What is catch 22? <coughs> Cardiac anomalies, abnormal phases, thymus hypoplasia, cleft palate, hypocalcemia, chromosome 22 deletion. Ye sabko bolte hai. Catch 22, you have to be very sure. Right, doc? Now, most common organism leading to fungal infection in the ear. Biscuit question. Aspergillus niger. Most common cause of the sensory neural he hearing loss. Buddha pebe dada ji ko sunai nahi dega. Oh hai presbyacusis. That is what we need to remember. Doctors, five minutes we will restart the session. I will be going uh, offline. Uh, I have to download the PowerPoint. Our guys will be preparing the PowerPoint like hot, hot idli. Sir. Just to take a break, walk into the kitchen, have a cup of coffee and then uh, join back. Within five minutes we will restart.